All right. Well, welcome everybody to this evening's webinar. This is going to be really a good one. As you know, we do guest speakers within our industry from time to time. And this evening, we're going to talk about outsourcing. And we're going to talk with uh, Nathan Hirsch, who is one of the owners of freeup.com. And as you'll notice, it has three E's. And Nathan, what's the, what's the third E for? E-commerce. E-commerce. We did that joke. Nathan actually uh, joined us in our uh, private label live event in Florida. And I brought that up and he had the ready response, which I thought that was funny when he, when he had that in there. But you know, when you think about it, getting domain names nowadays, you got to come up with some clever and creative things like that. But, uh, but anyway, outsourcing, as we all know, is a topic that has come a long way over the years. And I came across Nathan and what he's doing. And I really think he's trying to focus on, as he said, the E is for e-commerce. And for those of us who want to grow our business, I can think of no better way to do this. Uh, came across Nathan, as I said, he did a, a one of the, the, the topics in our in our private label live, and it was one of the more popular, well received things that we did. So I wanted to bring him on and have him have the opportunity to talk to everybody because I like what he's doing, and the fact that he's focusing his business really on e-commerce, I think is is good for our industry because it's concentrated on what we're doing. You don't have to explain so many things. I'm probably still in a lot of the thunder here, Nathan, but. I was going to say, I'm big on what you're doing and how you're doing it. So anyway, with that said, that probably wasn't the smoothest of all introductions, I'll say. But uh, regardless, Nathan, I want to want to welcome you to tonight's webinar. And, and thank you very, very much for being here. Yeah, I, I just want to thank you, Mark. You're a very stand-up guy. I know I kind of reached out to you out of the blue, and you've been very receptive and, and warm to me. And, and I really appreciate it. And I'm going to take really good care of your audience and make sure that they're prepared heading into busy season, heading into next year hiring the right people. All right. Well, good deal here. Let me, let me folks. And like I said, this is where uh, we all know my limit. I remember a Clint Eastwood movie one time where he says a good man's got to know his limitations. So let me see if I can do this and don't screw anything up where I hit the, the right buttons here to, to, to change presenters here. So of course, Nathan, I'm clicking on. Yeah. All right. Okay, Nathan, can I don't see you? What do I had to hit something else? But okay, there we go. I see your slides now. You got it now? Yeah, you've got mouse control and all that kind of stuff. You're good. Yeah. I want to okay. Leave the go to webinar open so that I can actually see questions. All right. Is that good yeah. enough, or should I make it full screen? If you can maybe make you know, make your screen full out. I can. All right. All right. Actually, that works out pretty well. All right. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining the webinar. Um, this webinar is six hacks to outsource for your Amazon business. Uh, my name is Nathan. I'm the CEO of FreeUp. I've been hiring remote workers for eight plus years now. So people have started to call me the remote hiring guy uh, because I preach it. No matter whether I'm talking to a brick and mortar store, an Amazon seller, or a real estate broker, if you're not taking advantage of outsourcing, if you're not taking advantage of hiring remote workers from around the world, your competition is, and you're going to miss out on a lot of potential, not only revenue, but less stress, more flexibility, and some really great talented people out there. So I kind of want to jump right into it. If you guys have any questions at all, this webinar is about you guys. So please jump in. I'm happy to answer them. Um, if you guys afterwards want to leave comments, I'll make sure that I get to every comment I'm really here to help and support you along your hiring journey. So for those of you here right now, I want you to shut your eyes for a second and be completely honest with yourself. Do you still handle repetitive and mundane tasks? Are you trapped within the daily operations of your business? Now, I was at a conference yesterday, a marketing conference, and I asked everyone there, I was like, who, who here spends 70% of their time on expansion efforts. So like marketing, getting new clients, sales, finding new suppliers, whatever it is, and not one person raised their hand. That means they're not valuing their time at the highest level and that they're stuck inside their business. So be honest with yourself. Are you on the outside expanding or are you doing the same operations on the inside? Do you just wish that you had more manpower on your team? I know my internal team, which we'll talk about in a second, bills me about 500 hours every week, which is a lot of manpower, way more than I can do myself, even if I wanted to. And I still feel like I could use more manpower. So I'm confident that if you're trying to grow your business, you probably feel like that as well, even if you're working 60, 70, 80 hours a week. And lastly, what's preventing you 
from taking that step, from outsourcing, from posting a job, from going to Upwork or FreeUp.com or hiring an employee, whatever it is, is it because you haven't have you made mistakes in the past? It's because you've never done it before? Are you just too busy? You can't go through that interview process? This webinar is gonna really help you with that. So real quick, I wanna tell you guys about me. So I own a condo in Orlando, Florida. You can see a picture of me and my beautiful girlfriend, Quinn, our cute puppy that we just adopted, Charlie. I built two successful businesses run pretty much by freelancers. My Amazon business had employees, I had an office, I got rid of it. It's now mostly freelancers with a few employees managing it. And FreeUp is entirely remote workers. It's a marketplace of 700 plus workers with 20 of them on my internal team. I have financial freedom. I've built the businesses to a point where I can buy what I want, when I want it, I can travel, I can decide where I want to live, I can make life purchases. And I have a 20 person super team. And you can see a picture of some of them right here hanging out. Um, a lot of them are in the Philippines. They are incredible. They monitor my emails, my Skype. Um, they make my life easier. They make me look really, really good. But it wasn't always that way. <laughs> I started to buy and sell products on Amazon back in 2009. I had no idea what I was doing. I was an entrepreneur. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I was a wannabe entrepreneur. And I just knew I wanted to sell products. And I was a broke college kid looking for extra beer money. I started experimenting with books and that went well. And I tried selling all these cool products that I like, like sporting equipments and computers and TVs, and that all failed. And then I found baby products. And for some reason, I was really good at selling baby products. So I'll say that again. I was a 20 year old single college student selling baby products on Amazon, having no idea what I was doing. I didn't know e-commerce. E-commerce was pretty new. And I got hit by busy season, my first busy season. And, and I'm on busy season number nine right now. And busy season number one, I never felt prepared, but even when I prepared, but in busy season one, I didn't hire anyone. I did it all myself. I went crazy. I was working 20 hour days, balancing school, balancing my, what was left of my social college life. And I was determined that January, once I got through it, to never let that happen again. So I started hiring and making some good decisions and bad decisions. And all this time hiring and these bad decisions and and not having enough manpower, busy season after busy season, and, and trying to grow my business and just being an entrepreneur, it just negatively impacted my personal life. And for those of you that seen pictures of me, I'm bald now. This is a picture of me with a lot of hair. A lot of that was because of the stress of just being an entrepreneur without the right team in place, without the right manpower. So I feel your pain, and I know how overwhelming it can be to just get something off your plate. Even the process of hiring someone and giving them tasks, it takes time and energy. But I know that you can do it. And once I was introduced to an entrepreneur um, that was actually on my softball team and I moved to Florida, he told me about outsourcing and it changed my life. It honestly did. It was one of the biggest things, which is why I'm always promoting it. And I, I mean, I'm all about hiring remote freelancers, whether they're US or non-US. There are plenty of people on my team that are making 50 bucks an hour um, that are top level. But the concept that I can hire someone for five to 10 bucks an hour to do repetitive operations so that I don't have to, that really changed my life. And over the past eight years, I've perfected this. Not to the point that I have 100% higher rate because no one has 100% higher rate, but it's pretty close. And the people that we're letting into the free marketplace, they're heavily vetted and they overall do a really good job. So my goal today, actually before I do that, so once I, once I learned how to do it, I really wanted to teach other people. And that's really how I came up with the concept of free up, the fast hire marketplace. I wanted to give back. You can see a picture of some of my clients here meeting them in person. Because when I talk to other entrepreneurs, and I still talk to them, they, they struggle with the same exact stuff. It was either the sca being scared to hire, being worried about security, having bad experiences before, the time that it took to do it. I've heard everything. But the fact of the matter is, you have to hire to be successful. Nathan, I did kind of notice the difference in the hairline in that last picture versus the previous one. <laughs> I know. I only lost my hair like three or four years ago. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so today, I want you to achieve that same aha moment. I want you to be, I want you to feel that exact same thing that I felt because it was a game changer to me. I looked at my business differently. I finally saw an end in sight. I saw, thought that business can be fun again because I can tell you, Amazon was super exciting year one and two. Year three through four through five, not as exciting doing the same stuff over and over again. Once I got really good at outsourcing around year 
four and a half to six, somewhere in there, it changed everything. Business was fun again. Building new businesses was fun again because I could focus on expansion and not the day-to-day -day operations. And I had good systems in place. So today, I'm going to teach you how to improve your interview process. I'm going to teach you how to avoid bad hires because bad hires are super expensive. It kills your business. I'm going to teach you to get the most out of remote workers because some of you already have VAs out there. How do you maximize them? They're an investment. You want to maximize it. And how do you build a remote culture? Building a culture with people in an office is pretty tough. I've, I've done it before. It's not that easy. Building a remote culture with remote workers, it can be challenging if you don't have the right mindset about it. So that's what today is all about. So I have six hacks to share with you. And hack number one, you can see a picture of a lake here. It's to turn off your computer, turn off your cell phone, go sit by a quiet spot. That's your first task. Get away from your business. And you're going to create two lists. The first list is a repetitive and mundane task list. This is everything that you do on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis. And you're going to jot it all down. And if you have a wife that you work with or a husband or a business partner or a team, bring them with you. Get them, get everything on that list. And I want you to go through that list and order it from easiest to hardest. And you're gonna circle three things that are the easiest. And then you're gonna talk amongst each other and figure out which one of those three things you hate the most. Because part of taking stuff off your plate, part of being an entrepreneur is doing things you like doing. Life's too short to do things that you don't. So even when you've identified those three, Pick the one that you don't want to do anymore. I remember the first time I woke up and I didn't have to answer customer service emails anymore. It was like hallelujah. It was one of the, those days that I'll remember forever. It was fantastic. Now, step number two, and you're going to save this list for later because we're going to focus on the smaller tasks first, but create a list of all your weaknesses. I once had a meeting with my business partner where we went through and we just told each other what we were bad at for an hour. And we got this whole list and we realized we complement each other well. And then we realized there were five to 10 things that we were both poor at. And so the business was just running with five to 10 things that we weren't good at. We took the opportunity to hire people that were really good at those things quickly turning weaknesses into strengths. But that's for another day. So with that repetitive list, we've now identified what you're gonna outsource because that's step one, create, figuring out what you're taking off your plate. Hack number two, oops, how did I go back? Hack number two is figuring out what your perfect worker looks like, what your perfect remote worker looks like. And a lot of people skip this step and a lot of free up clients skip this step because when you're a client of mine and it's free and you submit a worker request, we fill that request quickly and you get to meet the people and decide if they're a right fit. But I promise you, if you don't know what you're looking for, me and my team are not going to know what you're looking for either. You have to really figure that out. You have to imagine what that perfect worker looks like. Now, the most basic thing is price. Figure out what your price point is. The last thing you want to do, remember I keep saying hiring is an investment. The last thing you want to do is invest your time, money, and energy into someone only to run out of budget and let them go. So figure out a realistic budget. Can you afford five hours, $5 an hour, $10 an hour, whatever it is? And with that comes the availability. You can outsource, we have no minimums. You can outsource someone for an hour a day. Get that one hour a day back. What would you do with an extra hour every single day? So figure that out. Do you need someone in the morning? Do you need someone at night? Do you need them to work every other Saturday? Really define it. Be as specific as possible. What kind of attitude do you want them to have? Do you want someone cutthroat who's a sales guy who'll do whatever it takes to get that sale, to get that client? Do you want someone warm and fuzzy to answer your customer service emails? What kind of attitude do you enjoy working with? Because again, being an entrepreneur is enjoying what you're doing. You want to surround yourself by people you actually like. You'll be happier, you'll make more money. What kind of skills do you want them to have? I, I kind of put the skill chart from zero to 10. Do you want that zero person where the pro is they're cheap, but the con is you, you invest more time teaching them? Do you want that 10 out of 10 where you're paying top dollar, but you know what you're going to get? Figure out where in there that price point is because there's a time and a place for every single number on that chain. And then think about small things you normally wouldn't think about, like time zone, like other priorities they might have. How, how many other clients can they have? Because a lot of these freelancers, especially if you're only hiring them an hour a day, they're going to have other clients. 
So you got to think of all these small things that are important to you or not important to you. When I hire a graphic designer, I don't care about availability at all. As long as they can meet with me once a day or once a week, I don't care if they work while I'm sleeping. But there's other things that I do care when I work. And that goes for everything that you're figuring out. So really imagine what that perfect worker looks like. So we've identified what we want to outsource. We've identified what that perfect worker looks like. And if, if you have a freeup.com account, now's the point where you submit that worker request and you meet the workers, the candidates that we provide you. What's next? Well, the cool thing about freeup is we've already vetted these people. We get hundreds of applicants every week. We vet them for skill, attitude, and communication. Those are the three most important things. And if you hire outside of freeup, please remember these three things. Too many people hire for the skill. They find someone who's really good at Facebook ads, really good at Amazon PPC, really good at Amazon listings. And they say, oh, this guy's got a track record, let's hire him. They forget about the skill or the attitude and the communication. Those two are just as important. With attitude, I'm looking for someone who's passionate about what they do, someone who really cares. If I hire someone to do my QuickBooks, which I hate doing, they have to love QuickBooks as much as I love being an entrepreneur. That's the kind of passion I'm looking for. I'm also looking for someone that when they have a bad day, they don't bring down the people around them because that's equally as important. We've all worked with someone who's a cancer where it just spreads throughout the business. Avoid those type of people. Ask good questions to figure out, to pull out those red flags, to figure out, do they have the right attitude to work with me? And communication is everything. I mean, it's the most important thing. We have 15 pages of best practices in communication. We make the workers memorize and test, get tested on that. That's how important we value communication because I don't care how skilled you are. I don't care what kind of attitude you have. If you and I can't communicate at the highest possible level, it's never gonna work out. You're gonna have a bad experience. If you guys think back to past hires you made that didn't work out, I promise you a majority of them came down to poor communication. It is the key. Even if you're in the same office as someone, it's a key. If you're hiring a remote worker from around the world, it's equally as important. I'm sorry, it's incredibly more important. Now, when, when I'm talking communication, yes, I'm talking about speaking English at a high level, and they all do, or else they don't get in the marketplace, but I'm talking beyond that. I'm talking about someone who gives you updates, someone who hits estimates, someone who hits delivery dates, Someone who, if their house is on fire, you at least get a text message, some kind of update. You don't have time to chase someone across the Philippines, chase someone across the US. Strong communication is key in your business. And when you're doing an interview, I want you to remember to do it backwards. The way that people interview now, I once took a college class on how to interview. It didn't teach me how to do the job properly. It just told me how to answer interview questions. So people are trained how to answer questions well. What you really want to do in an interview is trick them. You're looking to trick them. It's just the truth, the brutal truth. You want to find out, is this person worth my investment or not? And the only way you do that is by trying to pull red flags out of them. If you go to my blog, free up blog, you can check out, I have six crucial questions. I'm not going to go over them because we don't have the time, um, but you can check it out. And I promise you, you can do interviews in 10 to 15 minutes, especially if you're using the free up marketplace where we've already vetted people. You can ask three to six questions and have a very good idea of what those red flags are. So check that out. And then last tip here is value your time like anything else in business. If you ask the important questions up front and they don't have the right answers, don't keep interviewing them for another hour. Be polite. You don't need to be disrespectful. Say, hey, I'm valuing your time. I don't want to waste your time, but I, this isn't a right fit. I'm going to go interview someone else. Keep them short. Value your time at the highest possible level if they're not the right fit. Hack number four, and sorry, this is cut off a little bit. All right, so you let's say you interviewed someone, you hired them. Too many people are like, okay, the reins are off, you're free. Here's every project, go do it. I'm gonna go take a back seat, do your thing. Not the best strategy. You need to set expectations right from the front. The first day that someone starts working for you is the most important. You need to get on the same page early. And if you can't get on the same page early, protect your investment. Cut ties with them. So we have a free client expectations guide that you can check out. Um, I'm sure Mark will put the link in there. And it, it kind of helps you set a template. Everything from what your pet peeves are to what's expected of them to the different people that are in your business, that who they should go to for what. 
setting that expectation up front, giving them a chance to ask questions, giving them a chance to even back out, incredibly important. And even quiz them a little bit, make sure that you guys are on the same page. If you're hiring someone for a one-time project or a long-term project, like a, a building your website or running your PPC campaigns, get on the same page early by doing a discovery phase. I even paid my people for a discovery phase, one to three hours. Do your research, review everything. Let's have a meeting so I can answer every question you have so you know exactly what I want. Let's define what it includes, what it doesn't include, and then here's the key. And remember this, you're gonna to wanna to write this down. Always get two numbers from them. The first number is an estimate, how many hours it's gonna take. So you can multiply that by the hourly rate, figure out how much it's gonna cost you. And the second is the delivery date. Too many people forget that because they think an estimate of 10 hours means, okay, two or three days. 10 hours could mean two to three months if you break it out. Get not only a day, but a time so that you know whether this person hit their expectation. Hey not just Tuesday, Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. The second it's 201, I'm holding these people accountable to what they told me during the interview because I only hired them because they told me that they can hit their own deadlines. And cut ties with people early before you've invested a lot of time and money into them, eliminating all gray areas when you're doing the discovery phase. Make sure it's clear what it includes and what it doesn't include. Make sure it's all in writing, not via a phone call that you have nothing to trace back to. All this stuff is gonna help you save time down the line. Putting a little extra effort into setting those expectations will save you hours and tons of money down the line. I also have a one-time project doc here. I'm sure Mark will put a link. Um, it, it helps you do a real discovery phase. It's quick, it's easy, it helps you get the most out of people that are doing one-time projects and really know when stuff gets astray because a lot of times things will start going astray and it's really hard to reel it back in. This keeps everything in line, and the second it gets out of line, it allows you to put it back in line, because that's what it's all about. If anyone has any questions, feel free to throw them to the box. Mike. Not sure what that complex process was about, but feel free to ask a question if I can clarify or make anything easier. So hack number five, um, once you hire these people and you've got them going and you've got a good system for it, um, you really want to define your culture and really only surround yourself with people that have that same culture. And I'll give you some examples of what my culture is all about. First is feedback. Everyone in the company loves feedback. They love taking feedback. I can't work with people that when I give them feedback, they get defensive right away. And it goes both ways. There's never been a time where I'm like, I'm the boss, listen to me, do what I say. It doesn't work like that. If someone starts I usually don't want them to give me feedback on the first week or two when they're getting their hands full because sometimes they don't know what they're talking about. But after that, all years, I want your feedback. Some of the big money makers that I've had, the things that have saved me, that have cut costs, the things that have increased revenue, were feedback that I got, ideas that I got from people. So I want that openness. I don't want someone to be a robot that just does what they're told because I said so. That's not, that's not part of my culture. Now again, you guys can define your own culture, I'm just giving, telling you some ideas that have worked for me in the past. Treating people well is a big part of my culture. We don't tolerate with swearing or, or anything, and it's not because I don't do it in real life. I'm sure I do, but it's just not part of the workplace. We're respectful. We talk nice to each other. When we disagree, it's respectful disagreements. Now, with that, and the third culture tip that I'll give you is accountability. Going along with the estimates and delivery dates, if someone tells me that they're gonna do something, I expect them to do it. No questions asked. I can't work with people that break their word. I don't break my word when I'm talking to other people and I expect them to do the same thing with me. So that, those are just a few simple values with culture. You should sit down and define your own. If you have a team right now, if you work, if you have a business partner, List three or five things that are important to you. And a lot of times you'll realize that there are people in your business that don't fit that culture. And you cannot expand unless you get everyone on the same page with that culture. Here's a little hack that'll help you along the way because a lot of you aren't ready to hire people full time and that's fine. I mentioned there's no minimums. You can hire someone for an hour a day. But what if you don't need someone for an hour a day? What if it's more project based? Hey, I need someone to optimize a listing here. Oh, hey, I need some graphic designers here to edit this, this photo of my product. Still build the long-term relationships. Don't look at it as a one and done. Don't look at it as, oh, I'm not gonna talk to this person anymore. Find graphic designers that you like. Find content writers that you like. 
find Amazon experts that you can consult with that you like and build that Rolodex up. The last thing you want to do is every single time you need to hire someone, be submitting a new request, meeting new people, going through that process again. It is time consuming. But when you find the right people, keep them around, keep them updated. Even if you haven't talked to them for months, whatever it is, if you have to send them a Christmas card or, or just check in with them, stay in touch because you never know when you're going to need them going forward. And if you're a little bit bigger, like I work with some agencies that need, need graphic design work, but it's not always constant. And if they hire one person on call, sometimes that person gets busy. Find two or three graphic designers that you like. Start a group chat. Whenever you need something, you throw it in there. First person that gets to it gives you that estimate, gives you that delivery date, and does it. It's a little hack to keep the ball rolling and make sure that you're never just scrambling last minute right before busy season to get your listing optimized. Build that Rolodex. Start today. You can do it. Find reliable people. And make sure the people that you work with have one common goal. If I hire a graphic designer for a small project, I tell them the goals of free up. It keeps them invested. They care. Give people a reason to care. They want a reason to care. No one does a project just to get the next project. They want to know what they want to know what the point is, why they're doing what they're doing. And if you go a little out of your way to get them involved and keep them included and make them working for one common goal, you're going to have more success. You're going to get the most out of them. And again, it's an investment. You want to maximize that investment. And hack number six, treat your workers well. You can see a picture here. This is one of my clients. He's one of the coolest people, one of my first clients. He loved his workers so much that he went to the Philippines traveled, met them, and then just took them on a, an all-day boating event, which I thought was the coolest thing in the world, and they sent me a bunch of pictures. So you don't have to go that far, but you can still treat people well. Reward people when they do a good job. Don't be the boss that's only talking to people when they mess up because we're all human, but at the same time, when they do something well, acknowledge it. Acknowledge them in front of other people. Be respectful. Before you fire off that email talking down to them, take a step back and edit it up because you don't want to burn bridges and you want to build those long-term relationships. Be consistent. We all know that an entrepreneur's life is hectic. The ups, the downs, constant. But no one wants to work with someone that one day they're up here and the next day they're down here. That is not a great way to be a leader. That's not how you lead. You need consistency. You should fluctuate right around the line and not going all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom. If you're having a bad day, people need to know that you're confident you're going to get out of it, that the life isn't over because they are going to go work with for someone that has that confidence. If you're having a really good day, keep things in perspective. Put more steps in place to prevent things. People, when things get too high, you have to remember that they can always go down. When things get too low, you got to remember they're going to go up. you got to act like that when you're, especially with remote workers, especially with Skype and WhatsApp and Viber, where your words can get misinterpreted very, very easily. One of the best feedback, some of the best feedback that I've ever gotten was from Chicky Ann, one of my assistants for five plus years now. I'm the godfather of one of her children. She, she told me, hey, people in the Philippines are a little bit more emotional. The way you talk to the people in your office, in the office at the time, cannot be the same way you talk to remote workers. You have to watch what you say. And she gave me a bunch of tips. And that really helped me. It, it reduced turnover. It made people more motivated. It made people want to be a part of something great. And that's really what it's all about. And if you have a bunch of VAs that are all working on separate projects, keep them involved somehow. Have a once a week meeting, even if it's a once a month meeting. Get everyone on the same page. Get everyone to share updates. What went well? What didn't go well in the past week? Okay, let's talk about goals. What are we trying to accomplish? Again, getting everyone to that common goal. That's what it's all about. So this is, these are just six of many hacks. You can check out the free up blog. We have a lot more content, whether you've, you're hiring for the first time or you have been doing this a while and you just want some hacks to improve and reduce turnover or make better hires. We have all that for you. So I want you to just remember, I, I said I have a 20 person team. I didn't just wake up one day and hire 20 people. It didn't work like that. I started slow. I got an hour of my day back and then two hours and then three hours. And after a while, I got good at it, and I continued to hire better and better people and replace the people that I felt weren't pulling their weight, didn't fit my culture, didn't meet my expectations, or even their own expectations that they had promised me originally. So start slow. It's a process. No one has that 100% hire rate. What you do when you make a bad hire 
is you go back and evaluate. What it, could I have done a better job of identifying what I'm looking for? Could I have asked better interview questions to figure out this red flag that wasted a lot of my money down the line? Could I have set expectations better after I hired? Could I have done a better job motivating, treating people well, setting the goals, being clear with my expectations? Reevaluate to continue improving that process. And like anything else, you're going to get better at it. Hiring is no different. What's different is that they don't teach you this in school and you have to learn it in real life. It's a big part of being an Amazon seller. It's a big part of running any business. The big Amazon sellers out there, and I can tell you this point blank because a lot of them are my clients, they hire very well. They make smart decisions. They know when to hire, they know how to hire, and they know how to treat people well and keep them around. My biggest clients have been working with the same workers for a while. They build up that Rolodex. These are the hacks that the big sellers are using. Be consistent and just continue to work, and I am here to help. If you go to freeup.com, my calendar is right at the top. I'd love to meet with you, answer any questions you have. You can find me on Skype. Me and my team are here to help and support you, no matter where you are on the hiring journey. So quick plug about FreeUp. The way it works is we get hundreds of applicants every week. We vet them for skill, attitude, communication. I'm not messing around. That's what we focus on, everything I just told you. We take the top 1%, we add them to the marketplace, and we make them available to you first come, first serve. It's free to sign up. There's no monthly fee. You can end the agreement at any time. It's in our best interest to get you workers that you like working with. But we can only get you the worker. That's just step one. Everything that you do after, from making sure they're the right fit to you, to setting expectations, to motivating them, we're there to help you, but you have to take responsibility for that. Now, on the back end, we have great customer service, pretty much 24-7 if you have any issues. We have U.S. and non-U.S. workers from $5 to $50 an hour. And the coolest part, and this part I added in based on my own experience, we're insurance against turnover. If you invest a lot of time and energy in someone and they quit on you, we cover all replacement costs. So you can sleep better as an entrepreneur. If you use Mark's link, you can see markadams.com slash free up. And remember, free up has three E's. You get a dollar off your first two workers forever. That's off their hourly rate. So if they were five bucks an hour, you pay four. We never change it on you. You can keep using that worker as long as you want. If you sign up today, and I'll even extend it 48 hours because I know that, actually, let's extend it a week, Mark, um, since I know you're going to post this on YouTube. So one week, if you sign up, you get a $25 credit. Um, make sure that you use Mark Mark's link um, in order to get that. Just email. Once you make your first hire, just contact me, and I'll make sure that you get that credit. Um, lastly, if you want to, if you enjoyed this content, if you enjoyed this content, you can check out my book, Free Up Your Business, um, 50 Secrets to Bootstrap Million Dollar Companies. Connor, my business partner, remember I said strengths and weaknesses. One of my weaknesses is writing, and that's his strength. So I helped put a lot of the content together, but he's the one that actually wrote it. Um, you can check out our blog. We have a lot of great content there. Definitely share it with your friends. Um, my calendar is right at the top of the website. I am very easy to contact. My email address is right there, um, and I, Mark, I am happy to answer any questions that people have um, or any questions that you have. All right, let's post for everybody. If you just start posting questions, we'll come into those. And, and Nathan, actually, I'll read those for you in a second, kind of go through. But in the in the interim, is it possible where you are? Do you are you sitting in front of the internet where you can pull up your website? Yeah. Do that because what I want to what I want to show everybody is the the types of services and different things that you have because. One of the things I really like about what Nathan is doing is that many of you have heard me talk about keywords and sub keywords and all these different things. And it's just showing up right place, right time for the right services and whatnot. I've been using outsourcers for a long, long time. And when you use places like Upwork before it was Elance and all the different renditions it's gone through, my experiences were was that it was for technical things and different things that I didn't necessarily do. What I really like about what Nathan is doing is that Nathan, if you would go to the section on your webpage, it shows all the different, maybe this is the latest rendition of it, showing all the different types of things people do is this. Sure. So there's the two parts. Thing. Thing. It's, it's, I think it's on the main page where it shows all the different services and e-commerce specialty type of things that somebody can. Yeah. That section there where maybe we just click through some of those, but as you see, yeah. you know, if he clicks through those, all of the things that they're offering are geared towards those of us in Amazon and e-commerce. And I really, really like that a lot because if I wanted to find somebody to do something specific to e-commerce, they were 
I always wanted to do some kind of coding, some something I never heard of or had no idea what the letters meant. And to me, there was always a disconnect. What I really like about what's being done here is that it's catered to us and in, in our industry. You can see everything from Amazon services, advertising, Shopify, all the different things that we as a community do. There's somebody here who does this and you don't have to explain to the outsourcer what you're doing. So for instance, if you want somebody to do Amazon PPC, that's a relatively straightforward thing where you define, as he said in his, in his presentation, a few expectations, and then you've got things. So to me, that's what really makes this unique is that everything that I could think of that we as e-commerce and Amazon sellers could use is here on this page. And I really like the, the, the way this works and for what it's worth, I use this service. And those of you know, I don't do a whole lot of webinars. I'm like a lot of people, even though I get seem to get inundated quite often with people want me to, to, to go over things, but my experiences have been very positive. And what I really like about the process here compared to, uh, a fiber of an upwork, whatever it might be. Those again are very specific, very broad, and this is a little more focused on our industry, but the process is you fill out a relatively short form and then they're going to pick somebody for you. That's best suited based on how you filled out the form. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out when you go into these other places to me, it's been, okay, gosh, I don't know who to pick. And you know, it's, it's kind of hard to, to pick, you end up picking by their smiling picture sometimes. And that's obviously not the right way to do it, but it's, it's giving you here. And then you get a chance to, to go on Skype or phone or whatever it is and talk with this person and actually have a, not necessarily a face to face, but at least a, an interview. Whereas he said, you see if you can connect with these people. And I think that's really, really important. So I like the process here. I've hired somebody and went, well, I'm in the, doing a much, much bigger project or in the midst of doing a much, much bigger project now. I'm actually having somebody who's going to design a whole complete uh, Shopify theme for me. So little odds and ends and things that work here. But ultimately in this, uh, for my two cents worth for for hiring people over what he said, the biggest thing is just, you don't, we all get busy. You don't want to take the time to, 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 to interview. And more importantly, you don't want to take the time to set up a system and train. But if you do, <clears throat> if you do those two things, 90% of any issues you could ever have are eliminated before they even start. I don't know how many times I've heard somebody say, complain about an employee and I'll ask them, well, what'd you do to set them up for success? And I don't know. I just expect them to come in and be ready to go. Well, from my standpoint, that's unrealistic to a certain extent. You have to define your expectations. I think it was in his number four. We was talking about that same thing. So I can't echo that enough, but anyway, long winded way to say here that I like this because you've got different things that are suited to our industry. And I kind of like the niche marketing aspect of this uh, for what it's worth. Nathan. So I got a little wordy and I mean to talk that long, but that was, uh, you know, that was, that was my two cents of the thoughts. And this is why I think you're here. Cause I think this suits us is within our e-commerce and, and especially our Amazon community, because we're around it all day and we think it's huge, but we're really kind of small in number compared to, lots of other things. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's my, my nickel's worth of, of comments again. So uh, if you got questions, go ahead and type those in and we'll see if we can take those. Um, Nathan, I'll see if I can read those out to you. Um, I think we're getting a question. What was the, the link again? If you wanted to, to maybe put that up on the screen while we're talking about maybe some of the other things. Here, I just threw it in there. It's, it's Mark Adams. Um, dot com slash well, it's actually, I think, I'm sorry, it's actually markscottadams.com. Oh, really? Yeah. Sorry. There it is. Like when you got a name as common as mine, <laughs> it's hard to get a domain name, so you got to throw the middle name in there just to, to get the, the domain. All right. Here's, uh, yeah, here's, uh, uh, here's uh, just a, a thought on this. Can you, can you go over just, I know you had a price chart up there from some different services. And maybe give us just a just pull three or four different types of things off the top of your head and give a range of what of what some of those things might be to hire somebody per hour. Yeah, so we're a marketplace, so the workers set their own rates. The, this is just ballpark. It show, it's a pretty good judge of ballpark pricing. Um, obviously, you hire someone from the U.S. It costs more than non-U.S. I don't make the rules on that. It's just what the market di dictates. Um, the, a great way to look at it, no matter what you're hiring for, whether it's Amazon, your website, or whatever it is, there's three levels of workers. You got the, the basic or lower level, you got the mid level, and you got the expert level. Now, the, mid, the basic or lower level workers, 
they're doers. They have years of experience because we're not a marketplace for newbies, but they're there for clients that have their systems and processes in place. If you've, if you're someone like that, but you've laid out step one, step two, step three, go with that lower level worker. They're in that five to ten dollar an hour range. They're going to do a, a really great job for you. Now, the mid level people are more specialized. They do one or two things really well. Some of them spend ten hours a day optimizing Amazon listings. Some of them do graphic design or bookkeeping, whatever it is. You're not teaching them. They're not following your processes. They have their own, but they're also not consulting with you. They're there to do those projects at a high level. And then you got the experts, the $25 to $50 an hour people. We even have some that are more than that. And those are your top level consultants. They can do everything on Amazon. They can do PPC, SEO, optimization, everything down. Um, they can project manage. They can come up with, they can help you create the standards and the systems and the processes for the basic level workers. Um, and they can consult with you. They can execute high level stuff. You can kind of use them as you want. So really try to think, hey, am I looking for that basic? Am I looking for that mid? Or do I really need that expert consultant? Um, and that's really a good way to go about hiring no matter um, what you're looking to do. Nathan, you talked about the difference between people in the United States, or I would presume Europe and Australia type of places as well, who are going to be more expensive than, than say, be in the Philippines, Eastern Europe, something like that. Is it anything more than just people's comfort level that makes a difference of where they hire? I know a lot of I'm people have you, apprehension I, about that, but they don't want to pay quote American prices. Yeah, I mean, I have plenty of U.S. work of non-U.S. workers in the network that I would put up against any U.S. worker. It really depends on the person. Now, if you if you have a product that it really requires an American culture, maybe the U.S. is the way to go. But I've seen so many clients that it works with non-U.S. workers. I have plenty of clients that, for whatever reason, they like U.S. and they go with it. Um, it's really there just as a personal preference. If you're on the fence and you're unsure, put in a request, meet a non-US worker. Worst case scenario, you're like, oh, no, I'm not comfortable. And you upgrade and you pay more and you get the US person. But a lot of times it makes sense to try the cheaper option first so you know what you're going to get and you can always switch to US down the line. You know, it's funny. I deal in the course of what I do and the Amazon training and so forth, Nathan, and I, and I'm sure you're the same way. I deal with people all over the world. And after a while, you realize, and especially if you've traveled a good bit and things like I have, you see the differences in people before you travel or before you spend time with people outside of your own country. But after you travel and after you spend time with them, you see short of a little bit of people talking differently, they're all the same. I don't know if it's a progression of just ethnocentric behavior you have to, to get beyond or what. I don't know. But I find at this point in my life, I'm very comfortable dealing with people from all over. So for me, it's not an issue, but I think it's something that some people have to go through. And I, I just would encourage you to, as we're on this subject, for those of you who were, who had that apprehension, it's just, it's not a, it's not a big deal. You know, you, if you can take the couple words that are not perfect English, that's fine. It doesn't matter. But uh, that's, this has been my experience because there's lots of talented people all over the world. Nathan, I think one of the big things that people have concerns over is that they think they don't have enough work or they're not really sure how or where to get started. And for a typical Amazon seller, where do you think most people, and again, obviously it depends on the person, but where do most people go to, to, or what type of job do they typically hire for in the beginning? Yeah. Customer service, any data entry work, QuickBooks, th those are usually the main things. And then, after that is the mid-level stuff like the optimization, maybe editing some product photos. Um, and then, I mean, the high-level stuff is usually the PPC campaign or the even the outside traffic directing them to the listings, getting someone to do FBA uh, reimbursements and refunds. Um, it, really just start off with easy, repetitive tasks and, the, and then build up from there. But, I mean, I there's no right or wrong way to do it. I have clients that jump right in and they hire a top expert to just do an audit of their business because they have no idea where to start. They hire that person for one to two hours. They get some really good information. Maybe they hire the, the top level person to work an hour a week. And then they, they from that information they gathered, then they hire that mid or lower level person to get to work getting stuff done because they didn't really have direction. So there's no right or wrong way to go about it. But it's important that you plug people in where your business needs it. Okay. Because I think those are the things too, as people are concerned about, you know, if they're doing their first hire anyway, is, what do they hire for first? And again, I don't think there's any right answer for that or wrong answer. It just, as I said, depends on, on what you don't like doing. It's funny. I always over the years, if I didn't like doing something, that's just what I hired for. And I think when now, you know, I used to have to have employees and physical employees and this type of thing. And I think of the world we live in now and 
outsourcing is something that I think has truly come of age. And with something like this to where you've got people who are already there, then I think we're, we're in good shape. So that, uh, that's just, I, I just, I like what Nathan's doing. And for those of you who are considering this, it's not a lot to find out. And you may find that if you get involved in this, this could be the very, very thing that, that literally revolutionizes your business. So you spend your time thinking about your business other than working on the, the minor details inside of it. But, uh, um, all right, here's a question here. It says, uh, next question says, uh, uh, it says about Shopify uh, workers, what level of expertise should you expect from them? Yeah, so we're not, again, we're not training the workers. We're a marketplace. These people are already trained. Um, it depends. I mean, we have plenty of top level Shopify people um, that can edit and build a website from scratch. We have other people that um, they can just make tweaks and changes to a website already built. We have other people that do more backend stuff like filling orders and adjusting prices. Um, it, it's really a wide range. It just depends on the worker. Yeah. And I think just in that, that's just where you have to go in and define your expectations in that meeting that you're doing with them after somebody has been referred to you is just find out if they meet the expectations that you want, because I think there's going to be a wide range, whether it's here in this marketplace or any other. So hopefully that answers uh, that question, Mike. One here, uh, you want to take, can, you can see questions, right? Nathan? Yeah. So Jeff, you want you to take that next one? Um, PayPal. <laughs> hey, so yeah, Jeff said the link's not working. So if Mark's link takes you right to freeup.com, you can just click sign up at the top and that should work. Jeff, let us know um, if it's not, but um, it, even if it doesn't take you right to the sign up page, the affiliate link is still working and you can honestly sign up and just add Mark's name into how you heard about us and we'll make sure that you get credit. Well, if something's really not good. working there, just, I will, I will post that link and, and take a look at it after we get off the webinar and have it in the replay and email and all that. So I'll address that a little bit later, but I was doing about the next one about the, uh, the PayPal one. Yeah. So there's two payment options. It's a bank account or a credit card. So if you, if you do either of those, it's free to sign up. There's no monthly fee. You don't have to put the $500 down up front at all. Now, it, for international clients that don't have a bank account, a U.S. bank account, or they don't have a credit card, um, or they don't want to use their credit card, we offer a PayPal retainer. And so it's really only for international clients. If you or if you don't want to put a bank account or you don't want to put a credit card down, instead of um, instead of those, you can put down a, a retainer. And the retainer, I mean, any money you don't use, you get back. So if you put down 500 and you spend $50 the first week on a worker, and then you end the service, we'll send you the 450 back. Um, right away. So the PayPal is just an alternative option for people that can't use a bank account or credit card. All right. I think Mike is, uh, Mike is, um, is posted here that go back to the page where it's showing the, the link again, and we make sure we have that right for everybody who's here. Oops. Um, okay. Yeah. This is right. Yeah. Okay. That's right there. And I think we'd had a .com on there somewhere or something. I'm going to somebody type in here that we had .com at the end. So obviously that's, that's what you see there is correct. It's markscottadams.com forward slash free up. And if we're having an issue with that, it worked earlier today. I will address it afterwards and, and, and follow up. But that, that should be what we have there. Um, yeah, Mike can I'm Stripe sorry. an option. Stripe is what we use for credit cards. So the way it works is we keep your bank account or credit card on file. The billing periods are Wednesday to Tuesday. If Bob is five bucks an hour and he works one hour, on Thursday, you get charged, and Thursday, you would get charged that $5. So Wednesday to Tuesday, Wednesday is your day to review the invoice. Thursday, you get automatically charged, and you still have a week afterwards to dispute any charges as well. So Stripe is what we use for credit cards. Okay. Um, got one from uh, Chris here. It says, interested in sales generation and outside traffic conversion. Can you share the client experience and success and how should the resource candidate and profile selection be like? And I guess he's obviously thinking of hiring somebody to do some marketing. So I, between the lines here, it sounds like he's asking of what should it be looking for. And I hope that I interpreted that right. Yeah. So we have a lot of top marketing experts on the team. A lot of people that are great at driving outside traffic. It doesn't really make sense for me to share a client experience because you might get a, a totally different worker. Um, with that, and on top of that, all clients are covered by an NDA. Um, with that said, it, when it's free to sign up and you request a worker and you meet with that person, most of them have references. They have samples that you can ask for, um, clients that they've asked permission to use as that case study. And it makes a lot more sense for you to get the case study from the worker you're actually going to be working with 
than me to just send you some generic client that was happy with free up, but might be using a totally different worker than you. So um, that's really between you and the worker. Um, and, and I mean, for that, you're looking for the expert. You're looking for that 25 to $50 an hour range. You can't hire a lower level worker um, and be like, run my Facebook ads and get traffic, get conversions on Amazon. Doesn't work like that. The one thing that I do do with lead generation is I, I have lower level workers that will help me research, hey, podcasts I want to get on or new suppliers. I use this for my Amazon business. I was um, constantly getting them to research suppliers that I would send a sales pitch to and the ones that were interested, I would get on the phone with and see if it was a fit. So for, for low level, you can use um, cheap workers, do that kind of lead generation for high level and getting generating outside traffic. It's going to be those expert level workers. Yeah, and I think all these too is that we're as different as the worker, we're as different as each of us. And that's what I like about this process where you have the opportunity to, I wouldn't say physically, but at least live talk to somebody, whether it be through Skype or phone, I guess, if they're in the United States. And it kind of gives you a thing if, you, if you're literally on the same page of things. And that's the thing that I like about this is that other networks, other, other marketplaces, if you will, don't have that option. So I think if you can be on the same page at the beginning, you're going to eliminate a lot of those things that, that are going to be bad experiences other places. So, I mean, I, my perception is that Nathan has obviously gone through this. I can tell that he has. I know that he has because he's positioned this to address the issues that come up in most situations of freelancing. So long winded way to say here, whether this is somebody who you want to do product research for you or who you want to search suppliers for you or whatever else, if you're not doing this, you should be. The, the small nominal amount of money that it takes to do this will come back to you many times over. And if you do make the occasional mistake and it will happen, inevitably it will happen and just write and just move along and get somebody else in the long run, you'll still be way ahead. So, you know, everything to me is like baseball. And I think there's an example in baseball for everything where in baseball, if you hit three out of 10, you go in the hall of fame pretty much. Well, everything you do here is not going to work, but if you stay at this long enough, you're going to come out way, 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 way ahead even if something doesn't work. And we all have that concern and fear. But I think if you take the time to 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 work with someone who's already been vetted and you take that time to make sure you're on the same page and you do your job of making sure you lay out and define expectations, then you got a really, 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 really good chance of things going your way. And I think it's that simple. And I just find that outsourcing is invaluable, but if you do it the right way, it's it's easy. And that's the way I guess you could say that about most things. But for those of you here uh, but most of you here, you know, I think the questions are, what can you do? What are the different things? And again, that's where you go back to this page and you spend some more time looking at everything from product research to having somebody do Amazon PPC for you, for talk, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. There's somebody there to do anything from Shopify to any type of e-commerce service you want. So I don't know. I just, you know, I don't do webinars unless I believe in the concept, unless I like what they're doing and I like it here. So if you if you want to participate in this, jump on. If you don't, well, that's okay too. So, all right, let me get down the questions here. Any other questions anybody wants to post? I think we've covered a good bit here, and I think everybody has a gist of what this is and a feel for what they're doing and certainly where to go. So we we'll give it a few more seconds here. Mercedes, if you missed the webinar, I'm sure that uh, Mark will be posting it on YouTube, and, and you can watch it there. Yeah, what we'll do is uh, short of tech issues, <laughs> and I always say that because I have the more times than not. I guess I need to outsource my, my go to webinar stuff, don't I, Nathan? <laughs> yeah. But uh, what I'll do is I will, uh, as soon as we can get a recording of this, probably tomorrow, uh, we'll get that out and post it and then and have a link to, to that as well. So, uh, all right, folks. Well, then I appreciate everybody showing up. And uh, thank you for being here. And I hope this is something that truly helps your business. And quite frankly, I think it has the potential to revolutionize your business. So those who act succeed. So with that said, Nathan, I appreciate you being here. Anything else you want to you want to add in closing? No, I, I mean, I, I really appreciate everyone's time. I'm here to help. If you think of any questions, comment on the YouTube video, shoot me an email, book a time on my calendar. I'm here to help. And Mark, you and I will stay in touch. All right. Good deal, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for being here and see you. Same bad time, same bad channel. Thanks.